than that, um, anything that, I mean, wasn't that far back, but anything that you all can uh, look at in the last game that you, you know, you definitely know you got to be better this time against them? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's um, a couple clips in that game of plays where we had opportunities, you know, in the red area, turn the football over in the red area. It makes it difficult to overcome when you're going against really good defense. Uh, and we just need to play cleaner and, and play better. But, um, you know, it's a good defense. I think statistically they're up there at the top or near the top in, in most categories. And so uh, really solid front seven, good players in the back end. It's going to be a good challenge for us. And for you, um, how does it feel to have the running game showing some life here against a team that's, you know, second in the league with sacks and pretty can get out the pass? Yeah, I think, you know, our, our we've, we've made strides, you know, uh, the last couple of weeks, and hopefully that's something we can continue to to hang our hat on. Uh, you know, it helps. It does. You mentioned trying to slow down pass rush, trying to do different things to keep them off balance. When you can get the run game going, it definitely helps in that regard. So uh, we've got to keep, you know, trying to improve there, keep trying to do better. Uh, and I think we've set a standard for ourselves the last couple of weeks of, of what we're capable of. And just in the middle of all that, Shaq Thompson seems to be a guy that's, you know, we've watched him grow. Uh, into that old Thomas Davis role. Yeah, he's uh, he's a he's a great player. Has been for a long time, and you know I think has developed into one of the better backers in the league. Uh, he's physical against the run. He plays with great speed. Very good pass rusher, uh, and excellent in coverage. You know, early in his career, they'd use him kind of in nickel spots, and and he could cover wide receivers and tight ends, and uh, be really good in that space. So he can he can do it all, and um, he's playing at a high level right now. How do, you, how do you mentally handle being sacked? Uh, I don't know. I think you just you, – it's part of the game, you know. It's, it's part of, of, you know, this, this profession is tough, you know. And so uh, mentally, for me, it's always bounce up and go to the next play. What do we got to do next? And, um, you know, I think whether it's, you know, positive or negative, I think you always have to have that approach. You know, even after you throw a touchdown pass or you take a sack or throw a pick or whatever – You've, you've got to focus on the next play. And, um, you know, keeping that mindset, you know, I, I have always found for me helps. Well, I, I ask that too because obviously you've taken a lot of sacks over the last few years, but you see young quarterbacks when they get hit, like it can derail their entire career. So I was just wondering if there was something you learned maybe earlier in your career to deal with it or if that's something that kind of even later in your career, just like, oh, this is something that's going to happen. Yeah, I think I, I just. I don't know. I, I, you know, I think um, for me, you know, I can't speak for for other people, but for me, you know, I've always, I've always just thought that's that's part of part of it. That's part of playing the position is is that there's going to play, be plays like that that happen, and and trying to always have that mindset of not letting the previous play, you know, affect what your what your next play is going to be about or, or how you're going to operate. Um, you know, for whatever reason, that's that's the mindset I've taken since I was young and. Um, it's worked for me. Do you remember the first time you got sacked, like ever, and like what that thought was then? Because that, you know, that's a different thing that you had to experience. It's a long time ago, man. That's something that might get stuck in your head. No, 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 no. You got to be able to, you know, delete, delete information. I think, honestly, I think that's a huge part of, of playing. You know, this position is is being able to kind of, you know wash some of those things out and, and you just go back to all right you gotta you know trust that um we're gonna operate or we're gonna stay in skiing we're gonna do the things we need to do uh on the very next play and and, and really just trying to get into that mindset but as far as we're calling it no I, I don't know do you feel physically like the guy who's been hit more than any quarterback in the league this year is it starting to uh, i feel good you know I, I really do my body you know feels good i, I feel like you know, I feel like um, I've gotten into a space later in my career where I've really learned, you know, what I need to do uh, in terms of, you know, taking care of myself and, you know, making sure that I'm as, you know, fresh as I can possibly be week to week. I think I'm much better at that uh, at this point in my career than I was earlier. And so, um, you know, I, I do. I feel, I feel good, you know, for being in December, being in the middle of it. My body feels great. Did you watch your Monday night game? I did. I don't know. It worked for him. You know what I mean? It, 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 uh, it, it worked out, you know, pretty well. 
the conditions looked tough. You know, it, it really did. I mean, not being there, but watching from the outside in, looked like those gusts were, were pretty strong. And so, you know, credit to them. Uh, I don't know what the record for the least amount of pass attempts is, but two? Two? Yeah, they missed it. They were close, man. They were close. I think they had three, right? That's the first. This is the. 74. I think I've got that right. Well, there you go. 74 is a long time ago. That's, at what point do you start screaming back at the sideline, I want to throw it? I mean, you know. Oh, man, I, I've never been a part of, of anything like that. So, um, I don't know. I think uh, if it's working, you know, at, at that point, you got to do what you got to do to win. And, uh, you know, ultimately, you know, personal stats and individual success, I mean, it doesn't matter compared to winning football games and, and you know, getting the job done. And so, we all play different roles every week. And sometimes, you know, your number's called more often, and sometimes it's called less, you know, less often. But you know, whatever the number is, you, you got to go out there and do your job. You may, you, you um, go back to your, the first uh, match against South Carolina, and uh, I remember after after the game, uh, Cal Pitts was talking about how this was like his welcome to the NFL moment when he matched up against Stephon Gilmore. Like, how do you, as a veteran leader of the team, like how do you help him kind of like learn from that? And kind of bring him along so he can, you know, maybe possibly have a better performance this time. Yeah, I think, you know, uh, I think I said it at the time too. I think we all, you know, have those kind of moments, and they don't stop. You know, as long as you play, you know, you're you're a week away from getting humbled. Uh, it's just the nature of of this league. It's so competitive. Um, you know, but I think the biggest thing you go back to is is the basics. You know, in in those kind of situations, your your attention to detail has to be spot on. And you, you really have to, you know, trust your footwork, trust your release, work your technique. Uh, I think those are, are the things that, you know, you, you at this level in this league, they have to be on point, you know, every week. And if, if they're not, you know, guys can, can get after you. And so that's for all of us. Um, it's, it's definitely a defense, you know, and. Uh, Gilmore's a player that you have to be on it. You have to be on top of what you're doing. And uh, I think Kyle's done a great job of that, though, you know, as, as the year's gone on. And um, it's just going to be important for him this week to, to have a great week of practice, to get himself ready to go, feeling great, and then, you know, trust his technique and trust his ability to go out there and make plays. It's all right. I just had a little, I don't know if it's like pink eye or – but I've been putting the drops in there the last couple of days. It's looking a little better. Glad you didn't see me Monday. <laughs> What's that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I just teared up. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I had a tearful ride down here. Yeah, keep working. You know, that's it. I think, you know, always trying to limit external noise and uh, stay focused on the voices that matter inside the building and, and day to day uh, and accentuate the positives. I mean, there's been a lot of good the last couple of weeks, too, getting the run game going, creating gaps for our guys. Um, you know, we're, we're a team that all plays together and uh, we're all dependent on one another. And uh, I love those guys up front. They work hard. They, they, they get themselves, you know, prepared, you know, really well week in and week out. It's one of the hardest working groups we got. And, uh, you know, I'd encourage them to, to stay the course. I think they're going to do a good job for us as we move forward. The, uh, the yards and targets and uh, completions to, to Russell Gage have been up over the last three games. I, I know sometimes the coverage dictates where the ball goes. But have you seen him do anything better or something ha that has improved to increase that, that chemistry and efficiency? I think missing some time, uh, you know, stretch kind of early in the season and then kind of getting back into that, you know, football shape and feel and playing. I think, you know, that always takes a little bit of time coming off uh, those kind of things. But I just think, you know, he, he's, he's done a great job of, of staying in the scheme, you know, doing exactly what we're asking him to do, not trying to do too much, trying to be open in the timing of the play. We talk about that all the time. You know, we, 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 we love you to get awesome separations, but it, it's, it's got to be within the timing of, of the scheme. And, uh, you know, I think the last couple of weeks, he's, he's really done a nice job of, of staying on time, staying in the right space, and, you know, making plays when the ball comes his way. The last time that he spoke to the press, he 
on TV, he was talking about like sticking with the plan, staying with it, and not overreacting or panicking at, at all. Is that something that you've seen from him, not not only over the course of the season, but as you've gotten to uh, know him? And how important is it when maybe things aren't aren't going right to not freaking out? Over it? Yeah, I think you know it's part of the maturation process, and you know he's he's grown a lot since he got here, and I think he's improved in in all those areas, and I think. You know, sometimes he has such great athletic ability and, you know, such, you know, good change of direction that, that you fall in love with making people fall or, or whatever. But we got to do it, you know, like, like he's saying, you know, not panicking or anything, not trying to do too much, you know, just staying uh, in scheme and, and, and doing a great job of that. I think, you know, that's, that's, that's part of playing together, um, you know, playing as a unit. And uh, I think he's, you know, he's, he's definitely improved in that area throughout his career, and I think he's done a good job the last couple of weeks. Did you get the thing out from the kids? I don't know. My kids don't have it. I don't, <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Is your vision okay? Can you, I, mean, I can see fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just looks. I feel like we it, can yeah. things an important skill. No, <laughs> yeah, my vision's fine, you know. But it just, uh, it just, it looks worse than it feels. I know we bounce a lot on Cordero this year. The way he's performed, is this about – as you could have theoretically envisioned when, when you heard kind of what the plan was for him? Yeah, I, th I mean, I think uh, I think he's done everything we've asked him to do, you know, and, and he plays hard, he plays physical, he's done a great job in the run game, he's done a nice job in the passing game for us. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I, I think from what they've asked him to do, I think he's done that. And um, I've been really pleased, you know, with him. He's a great teammate. He's awesome in the locker room, awesome in practices. Uh, he's the kind of guy, you know, you, you want in the locker room, the guy you want to be around, and the guy you want in critical situations of games that's not scared to go make a play. It seems like over the last couple of weeks, in, in, in the third and seven plus range, and that third and long stuff, that you, you guys have done pretty well. Now, you obviously don't want to be in, in those spots, but what's the key to converting when, when, when you're in an adverse third? Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to be there, but when you are there, you know, you got to find a way. And I think number one, you know, is is it's about timing, spacing, and trust, you know, in the passing game and guys being in the right spots and, um, you know, trying to space out the field really well. Uh, I think they coaches have done a good job of, you know, putting in certain concepts to attack certain coverages that we're seeing in those spots. I think they've done a great job with that. Protection's been good. Uh, and then we've had a couple play extensions too, you know, where – uh, you know, you kind of get outside the pocket and, and you make something happen when it's not, you know, initially there or designed to be there. And, you know, if you can get one or two of those a game, they're huge. You know, they're, they're you know, they're bonus conversions. And uh, we've done a nice job of that the last couple of weeks. You talked about playing against Gilmore. <clears throat> Panthers have another young corner, CJ Henderson. What do you see kind of when you're looking at their corners and the things that they could do? I think they're aggressive. You know, I think they do a good job, you know, trusting the front seven to get after it, and they're aggressive uh, with how they play. They make it difficult for you. You know, you have to be accurate. You have to be uh, on point, you know, with, with where you're putting the football because they're going to make their breaks, and, and they trust, you know, their instinct. And, um, you know, I think both those guys are playing well. Where does Arthur rank on the paranoia scale, coaches you play for? <laughs> uh, no. He's not bad, you know, really, no. Um, he won't tell us anything. He won't even say the word scheme in here. Yeah, no, he, he's – I mean, at least not to me. I, I don't know about with you guys. He may be a little bit more. But, uh, no, he's not bad. I think um, that's just his style, you know, and, and I think he just plays it close to the best. And, you know, that's all I can say. <laughs> you got any great paranoid coach story in the uh, I mean, every, I think there's varying levels, you know, <laughs> there's varying levels of, of paranoia. I won't throw anybody under the bus, but, uh, nah, that's, that's not me. That's not me. Uh, no, no. I think it, it gets increasingly worse, you know, the, the older you get, but, um, no, nah, nothing too bad. I mean, honestly, probably the Super Bowl was the, Probably the biggest thing when there was a drone or something at one of the practices. That's the only thing I can remember. Uh, they, there was a drone or something going on during one of our practices that they tried to correct. So that, that would be it. That's as far as I'll go with the story. Yeah. Can, can, a, can a paranoid coach make a paranoid quarterback? I'll coach you, sir. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
<laughs> I can only. This one. Listen. Can a more apparent, can an uber paranoid coach make a, a can that mess with the quarterback? I can only speak for myself. Uh, I, you know, I think I stay in my space. You know, and and have learned to do that pretty well. Good. One more. Any comment on that Kurt Warner does a big dust up on what Kurt Warner said? Have you, have you read any of that? I hadn't seen it. Okay. So I'm not going to. Okay. You guys were, it was on this morning and talking about, he was talking about the quarterback. I didn't understand some of the stuff he was going to say. I didn't know you read it. I, know you I haven't seen it. I know you don't. And I like Kurt. Yeah. yeah no, I do. Not. Yeah. I've got a good relationship with Kurt, but I haven't seen what he said now. Yeah. Thank you guys. Appreciate it.